High-end laptops are always a treat to use. After all, they are the pinnacle of laptop design and performance, which ensures a great user experience. When talking about high-end devices, the XPS lineup from Dell gets mentioned the most out of everyone. That is why for today we have the latest device from the XPS lineup, the XPS 13 9310. It combines a premium build quality with great performance that can handle just about anything that you throw at them. Furthermore, this isn't only an ultrabook but can act as a very good business device, due to being part of the Intel Evo platform, which ensures better performance and stability. Today we are presenting you with Laptop Media's top 5 picks about the Dell XPS 13 9310. The XPS 13 comes in a premium shell, to match the premium price tag that it charges. The lid and body are made from solid aluminum, with the base coming in two distinct materials, depending on the color that you go for. If you were to opt in for the black color, you get carbon fiber, which is fantastic, and the white one has glass fiber. The body is rigid, with just a tiny bit of flex and the design is also beautiful, with sharper corners and sharp edges. Weighing only 1.20 kilograms, and being just 14.8 millimeters tall, this is a very portable device, which you can just put in your bag and forget about. The lid opens easily with a single hand, and doing so, reveals a great keyboard and touchpad combo. The keyboard has very satisfying and clicky feedback, and a relatively long key travel, considering the very slim profile of the device. The touchpad is also great to use, as it has a big enough size, as well as a very smooth surface, which ensures great and accurate gliding and tracking. Please remember, it would be of great help to us if you just hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. That would motivate us to make even more and better videos for you. The XPS 13 9310 comes with a choice between two displays, both of which have a 1610 aspect ratio. The base one has a full HD plus resolution and is actually the one that our review unit had. The other panel is a 4K one, which should definitely be great to use. The Full HD Plus panel has comfortable viewing angles, a very high contrast ratio of 1730 to 1, and a maximum brightness of 544 nits, with a maximum deviation of just 8%. It's not all sunshine and rainbows though, as the panel uses high-frequency PWM to adjust its brightness, which stops after 140 nits of brightness. To eliminate the issue completely, you can purchase our HealthGuard display profile. In terms of color coverage, in our test, the panel showed a 96% coverage of the sRGB color gamut. Moving over to the color accuracy, we performed the test with both the factory settings, left, and with our design and gaming profile, right. We got a significantly better devalue of 1.2 with our profile. With a battery size of 52 watt hours, the machine endured through 12 hours and 55 minutes of web browsing and 10 hours and 20 minutes of video playback. As always, we do our tests with the Windows Better Performance setting turned on, screen brightness adjusted to 120 nits and all other programs turned off except for the one we are testing the notebook with. The laptop comes in several memory configurations, which is great because the RAM is soldered onto the motherboard, making upgradeability impossible. The storage, on the other hand, is able to be expanded, through an M.2 PCIe X4 slot, which sits under a copper plate. If you want to upgrade the storage, but have no idea how, here is our detailed teardown video, which shows you all the necessary steps, which after completing, you get access to the M.2 slot. The cooling isn't exceptional as well, as the solution consists only of a single bulky heat pipe, with two heat spreaders and two fans. As you can see from our stress test, the two small fans struggled to cool down the i5-1135G7, with the CPU reaching 100 degrees Celsius in the first seconds of the test. The temperature remained the same in the second part of the test, with the clock speed taking a hit. In the third and final part, the CPU was sitting at 1.65 GHz with a temperature of 73 degrees Celsius. The laptop also gets quite warm, with the surface temperature reaching 48.1 degrees Celsius. In addition to that, the fans were quite loud, due to their small size, even without there being that big of a load on the device. 